look at the tour of the Algarve, and as you can see, uh, so we're just going past some settling tanks by the looks of things. Uh, not the prettiest sight then, perhaps, on what is uh, a bit of a day today. Uh, Moto2 tells you that this is the chase down group at the moment, and it's been a busy old day up front. We've had a few escape bunches trying for it on this, what is described as the Queen stage, indeed. Uh, but a couple of riders decided to hit out and do more than a little hope. Um, how much longer they'll manage? Well, as you can see, it's uh, getting to the end, the end game today. Blel Kadri of AG2R, um, yes, who uh, run up on the circuit de South. He'd had a, a good old run. And Rabobank's Carlos Barredo, uh, as you can see as well, already swallowed up by the chasers. It's Sky that's doing most of the work today. And uh, doing most of the work today as well for us is uh, Mr. Brian Smith. Brian, welcome. Yeah, we're just, um, you know, on this stage at the right time. Uh, Team Sky have gone to the front. They've been uh, going well over the last couple of climbs. We are on the penultimate climb. Chris Froome just uh, heading away at the moment, just coming up to uh, Kadri's uh, back wheel. But uh, Bradley Wiggins looking good, but uh, also just struggling at the moment. Uh, the leader overnight, uh, winner of yesterday's stage in the yellow jersey there was uh, Bolson Hagen. So all looking good for Team Sky. We go over the top of this climb on the descent and uh, we're up to the, the finishing climb, which is a 2.7 kilometre climb, 9.25 average, with uh, a British winner last year in Steve Cummins. Unfortunately, yeah. he's crashed out today, Carrollton, and uh, he won't be defending his, uh, his title on this stage, but uh, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a difficult stage for everybody. I think so, yes. Um, famously, of course, got the better of Alberto Contador, uh, which was something of a surprise, but it does twist. It is a nasty one today, a real kick up to it, and um, it has several phases on some of the switchbacks here. Uh, that really can grind a rider down. Yeah, we're just uh, passing 15 kilometres to go, and uh, it's been a tough stage for a lot of uh, riders. And just see uh, the Team Sky at the front here uh, with uh, Richie Port, the new addition to the team, the Aussie just in front of uh, it looks like a struggling Boston Hagen. Uh, just he's behind you've got Johnny Hoogerland on his right hand side for back on Soleil. Well, Johnny, you know, he's been uh, featuring over the last couple of days. Hope you've been keeping in touch with him, Brian. Uh, Bradley, who uh, was a Accused of carrying a bit of timber earlier on, but um, no, Daniel Lloyd says absolutely not a bit of it. He's got those abs uh, uh, good and properly exercised here. And the banners, well, they just keep coming here. This is the chasing bunch, and Sky doing an awful lot of work today. Uh, Chris Froome, uh, the kind of key supporter, I guess you might say, for Bradley Wiggins, but Brad is looking reasonably comfortable today. It's always hard to read Bradley's mood, I've got to say. But um, yeah, it looks settled today. As for the movie star boys, uh, Bruce again potentially uh, looking good today. He'll be uh, thinking as well the, the longer game, uh, thinking about the uh, uh, time trialling later on in this one. Don't forget, that's the, the last day, the short one from Lagoa to Portimao. Today, incidentally, it's uh, destination uh, Malo Lule. Yes, sounds like something from Hawaii, doesn't it? Uh, well, we've got the sunshine, uh, but not the flowery shirts, perhaps. A little bit of downhill then as they kick down and get a bit of respite. There is a double bump to the final climb of the day. Uh, this is where you want to shake out those legs, Brian, because it's going to get a little bit explosive out there. Uh, Froome, Bradley Wiggins, Thomas Lovequist, uh, Sky, one, two, three. They'll like the sound of that. Yeah, just the power of uh, Chris Froome in that final climb, that, or that penultimate climb, just uh, pushing hard and not really... Uh, Nobody really going for the King of the Mountains. It happened in the, 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 the climb just before, as we see the, the guys uh, from Team Sky just uh, pushing hard. So Lufquist comes to the front, and they really want this stage. They want the overall. They've got the yellow jersey in Boston Hagen. Look to be struggling a wee bit, but there's not that many left. It's probably about uh, 30 or 40 riders. More riders will come on this uh, descent. It's, it's a wee bit tricky with uh, some of the road conditions here in uh, Portugal, but uh, the pressure's on, and this is going to be a great uh, finish. Bradley Wiggins only giving away 17 seconds. So if you can have a good day today, uh, the time trial sort of beckons him, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, Team Sky will have numbers. They will also have uh, Froome, I would say. I know he's putting a lot of effort at the front at the moment, but I think he'll be there and thereabouts. Bradley will be there. Uh, Lufquist, uh, Boston Hagen. Uh, 
This is going to be a very difficult finish for Boston Haggins. Quite quite steep, as we said, 9.25% average. It's I only over 2.7. He can do that. I mean, he can, but I think it's, uh, I think it'll, uh, it'll have the better of him today. Um, they just got to preserve him as best they can. But I think that yellow jersey may well up, end up with Bradley Wiggins by the end of the time trial. Let's just throw our minds forward as they come on this descent. Some nasty little cuts. You can see on the inside line, the uh, tarmac does just break up. Has been relayed, but that has its own problems here. And uh, just looking further back to a little brief focus on Tony Martin. Um, he super time trialist himself. But Tony has not had the smoothest of runs here in the Algarve, unfortunately. That time trial, don't forget, 25.8 kilometres. Um, you start looking at your times, your deficit when you get there, Brian. What's what's doable for the likes of Tony Martin? He's, uh, well, he's 10 seconds down at the moment, so maybe he's just in relaxed mode. I'm not too sure um, Tony Martin's got the form at the moment. Um, He's here, obviously, to try and defend his title, but he doesn't look in good shape. He wasn't looking in good shape uh, a couple of weeks ago in the Challenge Mallorca races, so I would think that uh, Tony Martin is maybe having a bit more of a relaxed start of the season and maybe looking at you know some of the bigger goals, thinking of the Tour de France, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of uncertain that he will be up here in this climb. Well, uh, they're just uh, dipping and bobbing around here, Andreas uh, Cloden. Um, of course, the Radio Shack boys here, Jan Bakerlands uh, is here. Cloden, uh, bidding for the overall. Chaco Montero, uh, Machado, I beg your pardon, Machado. He's at home. He may well have a little bit of a bid for glory, don't forget, the Portuguese. Uh, we see some of the early escapes along the way today and um, gives us a chance, really, while we're on this respite, just before the final climb, to uh, kind of tell you about it. Um, there was a, a couple of escapees went off early but we really settled down with eight riders including Christophe Riblon, Marcus Bergert, Mascant uh, and uh, Robert, uh, Ronan McLaughlin as well the uh, Irishman from the Ampo Short Kelly team they were there uh, along with others and um, they were looking pretty handy to be honest shared uh, some of the uh, sprints and the early climbs but they were all together before you knew it and when Sky have got the bit between their teeth, I think they're looking for glory again, you know. All right, they had a, a good start in Qatar. It's not really happened in Oman. And I think they want something to add to Bosenhagen here. Uh, they've got big ambitions. They sent a quality team, Sky. And when you look through who is actually here for them, um, you stand up and take notice. There's Rui Costa for uh, Movie Star. Um, that was Daniel Lloyd's pick for the sprint yesterday. Uh, this is uh, pictures a little bit earlier on when he's just putting some energy into his body. It's probably going to be um, a Bruce Keen that uh, does it for them today. We'll see. What about Lotto? Um, who out of the Lotto boys could be uh, a focus today? We were surprised by Gianni Meersman um, and his sprint talent, the Belgian kind of unveiling himself here. I suspect it's going to be Van der Broek and maybe De Klerk today for them. Yeah, I would think that uh, Van den Broek will want to try and show um, today. Uh, it's a uh, kind of finish that kind of suits him, maybe a wee bit shorter for him, but they've been really successful this year um, all over with uh, Andy Greipel winning again uh, on Oman. So, uh, you know, it just breeds confidence throughout the team. Um, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, Portugal, Oman, and when you got a win in the team, it gives that confidence. So it's, um, it's a great start of the year for them, but I'm not too sure Van de Brick will be in top shape at the moment. Well, we'll see. We're about to take uh, a brief break. We're on one of the uh, little intermediate lumps that we told you about before we get to the foot of the big climb proper. And that's when the fireworks will start here on what is described as the Queen stage of this year's Tour of the Algarve. Back in a moment. A fitting finale to the Track Cycling World Cup as the riders head to London for their first chance to race at the Olympic Velodrome. Oh, yes! The Track Cycling World Cup from London, Sunday 3...
Hill. So it's down to Chris Froome at the front, followed by the yellow jersey of Boston Hagen, just behind uh, Bradley Wiggins in third place, and Richie Port. So Richie Port looks as if he's the rider being a bit more protected here, and uh, it's going to be an interesting final climb. Do you know what? I'd like, to, I'd love to see Bradley actually stretching his legs today and bringing it home. Do you want to make a point? Well, he has. Well, looking at uh, the way they've set up at the moment, uh, Bradley has said in the press that he's way, uh, way ahead of where he was there last year. And, you know, look at what a great year he had. Mm. Uh, but looking how they've set up, uh, I would think that maybe uh, Richie Port is the man that uh, can do something. For, but for me, you just mentioned him earlier, we saw something of him, uh, the Portuguese the rider Rui Costa. Rui Costa's been up here in, uh, in this stage before. He knows it. Uh, so is uh, Tiago Macado of uh, Radio Shack. So TJ Van Garderen uh, has been up in this stage before, knows it very well. So they're the sort of names we're expecting when it comes to the finish, mixed with a few riders. But just look at the size of the bunch now. It's, yeah. it's not, what, 40 odd riders now left? in the, this stage well uh, the FAPL glass drive EFG uh, may not be the most uh, prominent team in your thoughts however they've got four riders here and they are showing their ambition in the all Portuguese team there are four of uh, teams that are made up almost entirely of Portuguese riders strangely enough all of them have one Spaniard and one of them the uh, Camim has uh, Thomas Metcalf Swift which is uh, always nice he lives locally and occasionally uh, gets the bike out when it comes to Portuguese events and the Algarve well <clears throat> personally speaking I think it's one of the best it's a, it's a very tight and busy affair and of course it's got this terrific climb it's a great one for the sprinters and most of the teams have sent well, quite talented, uh, to say the very least, if you look at Sky. But, uh, yeah, a, a good handful of talent, I think you might say, as Bosenhagen hits the front here and does a job uh, on one of the quickest sections here for Bradley Wiggins. I think Bradley Wiggins, who's already said this week, look, you know, uh, I love the way this team operates. Uh, they've got rid of a lot of dead wood, he said, without pointing any fingers. And he says this team is absolutely ripped and ready to go. He says he just does what everyone tells him. In terms of strategy, he doesn't like to think about it. He just rides his bike and goes when they say go. And today might be just that day. Well, you've got two uh, Sky teams. You've got one in Oman uh, looking after Cavendish. You've one here uh, with the kind of GC contenders, uh, the Tour de France, um, uh, like GC contenders team. The way it's set up at the moment, you don't often see the yellow jersey right at the front because... Um, you know, he won his stage yesterday and he's trying to defend uh, his lead, but just looking at uh, possibly winning the stage uh, with one of their um, guys that can time trial. And all these guys can, can time trial from Boston Hagen, Bradley Wiggins, Chris Froome, and uh, Richie Port. So they're the four guys at the front, end, but the way this guy is set up with Froome at the front, followed by the yellow jersey of Boston Hagen, Bradley Wiggins just sitting back a wee bit. He looks as if he's going to be looking after Richie Port when it comes to this final climb. So for me, Richie Port is the man that Sky are looking for he can time trial and he's new onto the team so they'll be probably getting them involved as uh, Chris Froome peels off from the front only three sky left well yes it would be one heck of a boost BMC picking it up here in the red jerseys sky at the front at the moment and uh, you can see they're rather familiar jerseys or at least one of them um, it's that sort of uh, blue stripe on the white background uh, the national road jersey is on the back of uh, Bradley Wiggins of course Kremlin champion, and out front is the leader's jersey, the golden jersey on the back of uh, Edvald Bosenhagen, who did the business yesterday and took it off Gianni Miersman, who was the surprise of stage one, you might say. A uh, quick look uh, towards the rear there is uh, Sousa, Sergio Ferreira Sousa. Uh, they're stringing out as the speed gets up here, and I think that this might just get a bit gappy as we start to hit uh, the climb, the last one of the day. Um, this is the pleasant little respite before it suddenly picks up, and it's the, about the last six kilometres that really are testy. Let's talk about it, Brian, exactly what they've got to face here. There are some significant, um, significant sections here, percentage-wise. Yeah, it's uh, this final climb, 2.7 kilometres, 9.25 average. But <laughs> I tell you what, it's not the, the climb. It's going to the climb is going to certainly going to do some damage. But it's the power of Team Sky on the front, especially with the yellow jersey of Boston Hagen. This guy's going out the back at the moment. That was Souza, uh, one of the, the Portuguese, the continental teams, going out the back. And it, what you know, it wasn't really. 
I would say, lumpy at that time. Not testy, uh, certainly. No, he just, he's, he's been up in some of the King of the Mountains already today. Uh, I think it was about... Uh, climb one three of, he yeah, took, actually. Yeah, yeah, climb three, took uh, the overall. So he, he, he's obviously got some decent form, but he just got blown away. The riders are all, you know, full on, full gas, as they say, in the peloton, trying to get, uh, you know, trying to put the big effort on as we uh, move towards this climb. Here and we go. Uh, here we go. Yeah, all of a sudden, a little switch back to the right and out the saddles they come and Bradley Wiggins <laughs> has decided it's time to stretch a few legs and not only his own but everyone else that's going to be forced to go with him as well. BMC, a uh, couple of checks over shoulders there. Um, did I see uh, Dries uh, De Vince? Also in there for Omega Pharma, and they're just starting to take a toll here. Totato just going backwards here. Well, we told you it might get a bit brutal. There's the leader, and uh, he's told them to go on effectively. Uh, there's going to be a gap back to Edvald Bosenhagen. I think he may well be handing over that jersey later on today. And here come the BMC boys. They've been spending some money in the closed season. Yeah, they have. Andreas Claude now been dropped, but. Uh the uh, Omega Pharma rider was uh, Katowski. Um, he was up there just behind the Sky Riders. I don't think he'll be there too long. Ruiz Costa is up there near the front. And uh, BMC still on there. Mikado there for Radio Shack. But uh, still the riders from Team Sky leading the way as the yellow jersey now gets uh, distance at the back. There is Bosenhagen struggling just a little bit he's not the only one that's Martin Velitz uh, alongside him there for Omega Pharma quick step in the pale blue accented dark strip and uh, we're starting to eat into some decent names here as well Vacan Soleil uh, also just heading backwards as we look at it. I think that's Liu Vestra uh, going backwards as well back up at the front then time to show your ambitions if you've got any Bradley Wiggins he is being a pace man today So at the head of proceedings and uh, Lotto throw is it bar de Klerk into the uh, Van and Brook also they've got don't forget here back with uh, the 2k to go marker <laughs> it's not going to come quickly this one is it Brian? No, it's a tough climb. You can just see everybody all over the place, and it's just, you know, the pace that they had this climb over the last, uh, you know, 20, 30 kilometres. Uh, Team Sky have just, uh, you know, ripped into this peloton, set a really difficult pace, had the bottom of this climb, and, uh, you know, Bradley Wiggins just took off. He's still at the front now, uh, huffing and puffing, but uh, on his wheel, he's got Richie Port. Richie Port looks really good. Uh, Van der Broek so up there for uh, Lotto. Ruiz Costa, Mikado up there in the fifth place. TJ Van Gabderen and also in there for BMC in the uh, uh, red and the, and the black so most of the major contenders who we would think of are up there back on leg uh, rider just in the left hand side but uh, as we see still Bradley Wiggins pushing hard on the front as we uh, we love to see in Britain yeah absolutely uh, I'd like to see how Van der picks it up uh, Mikado does and Van der Broek has a look see who's responding can he respond no he can't Sky still with great ambition here Van der Broek looks like he's uh, going backwards and so is Bradley Wiggins he's done his turn here I think he's made the salute. This looks like Richie Port's day if he's got what it takes. Oh, this is nice work. And uh, Zvitsov, the Kazakh. That was uh, his day today, you ask. Well, up they come. This is a huge effort here for Richie Port. It's been set up at Team Sky, absolutely perfect. and. Uh, just don't look back, just keep on going at the moment. Mikado in trouble again. Ruiz Costa uh, was the other rider that tried to go, and he's kind of blown. So this uh, front of this race is blown apart. Last year, there's a small group came to oh, the finish. This. But uh, absolutely amazing. How uh, refreshing is that? Uh, and how fresh does he look? Just Richie Port has decided to say uh, farewell to everybody. Somebody asking about uh, Zvitsov. Uh, down the line, several riders, I don't know whether they're being rested up for Sky, but uh, not part of it just for the time being. But Richie Port has decided that this is his day. And that is Tony Martin. There he is. And, um, yeah, uh, looking round the bend here <laughs> to, to see just what sort of deficit he's going to have. At the end, uh, Richie Port then uh, wearing number 32. Uh, what was his deficit as he came into today? Let me tell you, 10 seconds, that's all. And so, uh, well, we'll see just how much of a gap he's got. There's Bradley, did a good job today. He's got a smile on his face, despite a uh, bit of huffing and puffing, as you can see. 
He's been tested today. I think they all have. No, doing well. He, yeah. you know, doing uh, good confidence. He's come here. He's done his great work on this climb for Richie Port. Richie Port looks as if he's unbeatable in this climb. We're coming up to the last kilometre now. Wow. But uh, Bradley Wiggins putting in a great. He's hanging in there because the time trial tomorrow, and he has to test himself. That's why he's come to the Algarve. Macado, the Portuguese rider, is going to be disappointed in this climb by this Aussie for uh, Team Sky. Yeah, there'll be the time trial on Sunday. Incidentally, we've got a, another stage uh, uh, tomorrow. Let's not forget. Uh, into Tavira, beautiful little sardine fishing. Give you some tips on that later on. Uh, yeah, how we'll be handing out advice, presumably Richie Port at the end of this one, when people say, "How on earth did you do that? That was amazing." Pimenta Costa uh, looks like he's going to have a decent finish here as well. Uh, Talansky. Uh, as well, also picking it up towards the end. It does flatten out, a little bit of a plateau here, uh, but it's all going to be applause for this man as Richie Port just rides this one home. Round the final couple of bends here. There we are, the last of the markers coming up for him. What a pleasant sight that is after all of the efforts today. Uh, good run as well here for Johnny Hugeland. That's nice to see. Yeah, we saw him up uh, near the front, but uh, inside the last kilometre, Richie Port has got this wrapped up. Mikado there. The cameras are jumping about at the moment. Uh, just got a glimpse of uh, Nicholas Roach also up there, but uh, it's going to be all Team Sky for today. Yes, uh, a little bit uh, further back, there's uh, Rui Costa that we were talking about as well. Also wanting to stay in touch here. And there he is, 10 seconds gap overall for Costa. But it's all about Port today. And indeed, the way the Sky team have been looking after him. 400 metres remaining. And uh, the camera couldn't get much closer, could it? Crowds turning out in force here. They love their cycling in this part of the world. And uh, so many cyclists you can catch up with, incidentally, if you uh, want to see people involved in their training camps. Portugal, one of the favoured venues. It's uh, not overly expensive either. And look at this final drive here. Places up for grabs, and they all want a piece of it. But Port here has opened the door to himself and stepped through. This is a great step forward. He looks so relaxed there. Oh, he looks so good. And, uh, you know, that's why the, the team went to the front and kind of ripped it up. And, uh, you know, Bradley Wiggins doing a terrific job there. But inside the last uh, few metres for Port. The line beckons for him then. This will be a pleasant sight. Oh, look at that. Why not? Points to the sky as well he might 40 kilometers per hour the average speed today and uh, just five minutes shy of uh, the five hour mark what a day that has been a tough one yeah that was Mikado coming in there for radio shack just in front of Ruiz Costa two Portuguese riders so they'll be happy with that performance but uh, performance of the day has to be uh, Richie Porter's Hoogalink comes in there and just behind him Walt Pauls uh, Van de Brugge for Lotto shakes his head not happy with that yeah, it's, uh, it does kind of rip your heart a little bit. Uh, was that Hernandez as well, the Spaniard coming across the line? And uh, I think that was Silva who featured earlier on. Here is uh, here is Bosenhagen looking uh, like he's chugging just a little bit. A few more have been across the line in the meantime. Bosenhagen did a good job out there. Um, clearly not his kind of day at this stage of the season, at least. Not the lumpiest day. Not the biggest test climbing wise, and uh, he'll have to face more than that this season. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately for him, he's uh, he's not one of kind of Cab's lead out men. He is, uh, you know, he's a good sprinter of his own right. So he's with the kind of GC contenders like Le Bradley, Richie Port, and Chris Froome. So he'll ride the harder races. But then again, he produced a great one yesterday. So you know, it suits him to be a bit lumpier. Uh, well, Cav and the rest of the uh, the other half of the team, as Stein de Volder comes over for a back on Soleil, shaking his head. A lot of <laughs> tired bodies there, but uh, yeah. Boston Hagen uh, happy. Uh, he's got his place in these um, these teams in these kind of hillier races, and he can pick off a stage win like he did yesterday. Yeah, good work. Richie Port then, Machado, uh, Rui Costa, Johnny Hugeland, terrific fourth place uh, for the barbed wire battler. Uh, there is Walter Powell's as well, uh, his teammate from Vacon Soleil, who seemed to be shining brightly this early part of the season. Jürgen van der Broek uh, managed sixth place to the head of Tulanski Mendes. Bradley Wiggins just easing off the gas towards the end there. 39 seconds he gave away to Richie Port today. That'll be a 29 second gap between the pair of them going into the time trial if they have the same time tomorrow. Nico Roche making up the top 10, not bad.
Yeah, and Nicholas looked uh, good. He looked good the other day in the first stage, getting up there in the top ten. Bradley, yeah, that's that's a good for what he did at the bottom of that mm. climb and the, the you know before the climb as well, um, hanging on there, which we thought we would. It's, it's good for him to be in there. He still stands a good chance. We've got a, a good stage tomorrow and a good time trial. He stands a good chance of getting up there in the podium as well. Rosenhagen looked a bit tuckered out by the end of today. Yeah, he put in a big, a huge effort before that final climb. It was, I think it was four, about four or five kilometres he was on the front and there was guys going out the back. So mm. he uh, he done his uh, team proud today. Um, they held on to that um, uh, yellow jersey. He and really stretched the bunch, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so they're having a, a very fruitful uh, uh, Walter Argarve. Uh, won in the stage yesterday with uh, this man here, Bosenhagen. But this is the man of the day. Uh, Richie Port there doing it today for Sky. We'll have Brian Smith back with us on Sunday. Thank you for your company, Brian. Enjoyed it? Fantastic. Great day for Sky. Yeah, super. They really are picking up the mantle of Pelham bosses. And we like that. We'll see you tomorrow. From me, Carlton Kirby and Brian Smith, thanks for your company. For now, bye-bye.